the, the key pattern that you've already sort of cotton onto is F dash on F, yep. right? That's what I'm searching for, okay? Now you've already identified, you're like, oh, I, I don't want 10x cubed, I want 20x cubed. Where does that come from? And the answer is, if f of x really is 5x to the 4 minus 7x squared plus 8, right? Then f dash should be what? What should it be? Of what? Of f. Uh, of the denominator. 20, uh, 20x to the power of 3. Mm -hmm. And? Minus uh, 14x to the uh, power of nothing. Uh, plus 8 to the power of 1, but yeah, plus 8. Plus eight? That is gone. It's gone, right, because that's, you differentiated and it's disappeared. Okay, good. So that's what I want, yeah. that's what I want. And you can see it is suspiciously close to what I've got. In fact, what I've got is exactly half the oh size. God, it half the, oh, wow. It's exactly half the size. And what you'll find is, it is often like this. The numerator, if we want to make it easy, mm -hmm. relatively easy, we will make that top thing a um, an integer multiple <laughs> or an integer yeah proportion of it, right? So, you just put so brackets, brackets and two. Okay, so all right, let's 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 unpack that, right? So you said just put brackets and a two, right? Which gives me this. Mm. Like so. All divided by, let's let's be exceptionally lazy. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that that Smart. is super lazy. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to be efficient with time. Okay, now we've put this two here. Mm -hmm. But you can't just make it twice as big because you want to, because it's convenient to you. So put two on the outside? Does, if I put two on the outside, no, it this is still not equivalent to what I started with, right? Do you remember when I put a, um, and it's admittedly, like I kind of walked right into this, right? When I showed you this example here, I wanted a minus sign. Because they cancelled out. And that's because they so cancel out. Ah, yes, very good. So these two cancel out. What I want is for the two and whatever I put out the front to cancel out, which is indeed a half. Yes. Okay, does that make sense? So now you can see these two together, those two things I've highlighted in pink don't actually result in any net change. You still have the same thing. Right. Okay? I just described it more. Now, now I'm ready to go. So that half hanging out the front, mm -hmm. it's just hanging out the front. And now what? Uh, you expand the top, which is just going to be the diff of the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have to do that. It's just going to waste time. Yeah, so you already know. You already know it's going to be the... Um, the LN. 20x cubed minus 14x, you headed, right? Exactly. So let's let's not write the integral again. We're so ln. Uh, ln, uh, absolute brackets, mm -hmm. bottom, mm -hmm. denominator. Yep, fantastic. That was a bit, um, like so? Yep. Uh, close it, and then plus c. Done. That's it. That wasn't hard at all. It did bark really well. Right? <laughs> um, in fact, you know, sometimes, it's one of the things about mathematics, right? It's, you know, real life lesson. Like, people hear and see mathematical things all the time, and they respond the same way we did when we looked at it, like, ah, <laughs> like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. And then we just kind of, the danger of that, of course, is we just accept whatever it is that people say on the basis of that, understanding removes without it. understanding, right? And then you're like, actually, if I just pushed a little bit, yeah. I could have understood it, and then I would be able to, um, I would be able to scrutinize or critique the situation and the conclusions you draw from it for myself, rather than just accept what you said which happens all the time. So that is incredible. that's why it's worth pushing past that initial gross feeling. Okay. See if you can work with that. And is there any other twists that I should keep in mind? Um, okay, so... I mean, the main twist... <laughs> uh, if I had done this again, I would have actually done this slightly in reverse order. The main twist is that sometimes this happens, right? Whereby the top isn't the derivative of the bottom and it will and it will and it never will be even when you multiply or, or divide or whatever what you need is actually to separate it completely into two integrals and then you can see one of them ends up being um one of them ends up being a log and then the other guy turns into something completely different right and that does happen can you, um, can you do that with any number when you say do force with any number force it into um a normal polynomial um, it, it depends. So if, for example, it completely depends on what you get handed. Just muscle it up. <laughs> so if I gave you this, yeah. right? Um, this guy up the top, it all comes from the derivative of this guy down the bottom, True. right? So if you were to try and break it up, suppose you took the 10x cubed term and just separated it out from the minus 7x, right? What you'd then end up with is you're like, oh, I'm stuck. Like, there's no way I can take those things separately and get an integral out of them. I need them together to be um, f dash. I'm not even going to try to conceptualize Yeah, don't worry about it too much. <laughs> um, 
But yes, you, what you just need to watch for is like, if you can turn it into F dash, like we did, like you did, it'll be fairly apparent fairly quickly. If you can't, you'll be like, oh, there's an extra thing hanging out here. I've got, I've got to do something else with it. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Cool. I feel like we should call it. Unless you have a burning question you wanted to have a look at. Uh, no, it's just a clarification here, but you don't have to draw anything. No, it's fine, um, it's fine. When you have that uh, x-axis and you have like that dip in the graph and then you like find that. When you, I'm, I'm gonna draw something. Okay, <laughs> you said, you said, when you've got um, axes. Yeah, and a parabola that dips under where. Like that? Yeah. And you're trying to find this? Yep. What's the question? Uh, is it under the curve? Ooh, it's a good question. Um, so. Is it Okay, all right, all right, so, 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 suppose uh, this was a, a function of some kind, right? Doesn't even need to be a parabola, yep. okay? And your job was to find um, this area here, mm -hmm. okay? Um, your question was, is that the area under the curve? Now, it's a good question because, strictly speaking, that's above the curve, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just above. Area under a curve is, is kind of a... Uh, Colloquial is not the right word, but it's kind of like a, it's, it's a bit of a shorthand for saying what it really means is the area bounded between the curve and an axis, mm. right? Um, I don't know if you remember this, but one of the graphs we looked at looked like this, and we actually said, you know what? I want to find this area over here. Yeah, it's not above, not it's not below, thing. right? Uh, it was in the online class. So the point here is actually integration enables you to find any area bounded to any axis, right? It doesn't have to be above or below, it doesn't have to be left or right, whichever way you want, right? So area under a curve, the reason why we say that is because the most frequent kind of area that we get is an area underneath the curve. But the, the technical way to say this is it's the area bounded between the curve and the x-axis. You even have to say x-axis because uh, as we saw in this example, it could be, it could be the y-axis. Yeah, right? and the way you do that is just draw a, a, a um, rectangle and then uh, minus... Are you, talking about, are you talking about this one here? Yeah, minus the theoretical value of that rectangle with the known curve which you just made up. It, it depends entirely on what that curve happens to be. So the example I gave you for, that, for this one over here was actually y equals log x. And the reason why I looked to the left-hand side in the first place was because I don't know how to integrate log x. Actually, I don't know how within the scope of this course, right? right? So I'm like, mm, I, can't, I can't do this, right? Right? So, so what did you right? Do? So what I can do though, is that I can integrate with respect to, like this is y equals log x, which if I rephrase it as x equals e to the y, I can integrate e to the y with respect to y these end up being related interconnected questions. But I can integrate this one even though I can't integrate this one. Which becomes what? Well, e to the y just becomes e to the y. Right. Plus a constant. And then if you want this particular area, you just put in some boundaries and then off you go. Put in boundaries. And then you put in the boundaries of a rectangle and then minus that. Correct. Would, it, would you be able to, because um, my first instinct was to rotate. Uh, you can do that too. You absolutely can you do that too. You change the whole equation for Yeah, I mean the reason why, um, I actually used to teach this particular problem like that. The reason why I no longer do that is for two reasons. Number one, um, you are dra dramatically redefining the question. Mm -hmm. You're like, <laughs> I don't like this question. Here's, a, here's another one which is easy for me to solve. It is equivalent. Same, same. same, same but different, right? Yeah. Um, but, but the thing is, if you're gonna do something like that, you must justify it very, very, carefully and specifically because you're like here's this other great problem i solved and you're like yeah great there's another problem i wanted you to solve right yeah. so if you're going to do that you can't um you know uh, you can't muck, muck around with that you've got to be very specific mm -hmm. that's the first reason i don't like to do it the second reason is the way that you can do it without redefining the way i just described considering it as an area bounded to the y-axis you've got to know how to do that anyway mm -hmm. so it's like well i might as well teach you by by way of this question Fair enough. okay